probably marching right now for the gay Nazis or something. So today I am going to go a little bit different route. I'm not going to be reviewing anything obscure or weird, but kind of a classic. So I'm actually a few months late in making this video. But I wanted to talk about one of my favorite movies of all time, Crocodile Dundee. Uh, just last year in September of 2016, it actually celebrated its 30th year anniversary. And to my surprise, I didn't really see any internet hype or celebratory posts or even YouTube videos. So come on YouTube, where are the 30th anniversary retrospective videos? Unfortunately, I'm not here to do an in-depth history of Mr. McDundee, but I did want to do sort of a rewatching and retrospective of this beloved movie that, in my opinion, goes a little too far under the radar. In the last few years, the box office in the United States has been largely dominated by franchise films. Basically, the top 10 is always going to be movies like Star Wars, superhero movies, Disney, Pixar, Fast and Furious, or anything that has spawned several sequels. But in 1986, when America was introduced to Paul Hogan, it became the second highest grossing film of the year. When I first read that, I was shocked. That meant it only lost out by less than $2 million to Top Gun. Dundee slayed at the box office, being out tons of modern day classics and pop culture favorites like Aliens, Platoon, Star Trek IV, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Stand By Me, Karate Kid 2, and tons more. But is it just me or does nobody talk about this movie anymore? It seems like we're in the age of nostalgia when it comes to 80s and 90s films. I know I am. Just take a look around at all the reboots and sequels from the past coming out. Or really, look at how mainstream nerd culture has become. Thanks to companies like Funko, every movie now has a toy, except for <clears throat> McDundee. <clears throat> but I bet that will change soon. Anyway, my point is, it just seems surprising that this film hasn't made the same impact on our pop culture as other movies have. Granted, success at the box office doesn't always mean it will hold up in popularity over time. Take for example a movie like Dances with Wolves. In 1990, it was third at the box office. And while maybe a great movie, I haven't seen it, it's not one that anybody seems to reminisce about. Or look at the year 1989. Look Who's Talking grossed $140 million, beating out competition like Back to the Future 2 and Ghostbusters 2 by over $20 million. Like what? How does that even happen? Well, I was four at the time, so I can't tell you, but look at the impact those two sequels have had versus a movie that introduced many kids like myself to the wonders of sperm cells in the weirdest opening scene of any movie ever. And not to bore you with box office numbers, but if Crocodile Dundee had been released in 1987 or 1988, it would have been the number one movie of the year. But anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about my experience in revisiting this for the first time in a long time. My family owned both the original and the sequel on VHS, so of course, I watched those on repeat, and of course I'm going to be biased and not really have anything negative to say. But this isn't really a review per se, but more of just me wanting to talk about things I love and the memories I have of it. And also some interesting stuff I discovered while rewatching. I was sort of married once. Nice girl, good cook, big... <laughs> For some reason, I've oftentimes compared Mick Dundee to Indiana Jones. I know they're completely different movies, but maybe it's their unique outfits or their alpha male nature combined with their own unique weaponry. However, I would say Mick has an edge on Indy because Mick ain't afraid of no snakes or crocodiles or anything else for that matter. That girl, she's a guy. A man dressed up as a girl. A fag, for Christ's sakes. One major thing I love about the movie is how it splits it up into two. We have the first half exploring the bush in Australia, with everything from aborigines to bar fights to croc attacks. And then the second half, we get to see Mick out of his nature trying to adapt to the big city of New York. It's not an original idea in cinema, but it works great. The other thing I love, I just love it, is the music. When the theme hits at the beginning of the movie, I get a slight ting of chills and that rush of childhood nostalgia rushing all over me.
I suggest you find the full five minute theme on YouTube to listen in its entirety instead of how they kind of cut it up into pieces through the movie itself. I mentioned before that Mick Dundee has traits of a quote alpha male and when rewatching, I really notice those qualities. Ask a girl to dance? Forget that, you just make her. Uh, here you are. Go on, Cyril for me while I dance with this. Charming young lady. A fellow guy trying to undermine your alpha male status? Deal with it your own way. Where can a man shoot a few crocs around here, eh? Oh, <laughs> well, how would I know? Shit for brains? Or is your love interest getting attacked by a giant crocodile? Just stab a knife in its head and twist until it's dead. Maybe I love McDundee because he's basically a superhero to me. Somebody I can't and will never be. As well as sharing some actions with a certain US president. Grab him by the pussy. Something matter, darling. Oh. Ah, pleased to meet you. But hey, what can I say? This came out in 1986. It was a different time back then. Growing up, the movie left some interesting imprints on me in some of the most random ways. Even at the age of 31, sometimes when I come across a wild animal, I will try to mimic Mick Dundee's weird trait of using his devil horns and humming to put an animal to sleep. And yes, I have tried this multiple times. It doesn't work. And it definitely doesn't work on vicious Rottweilers, so don't even think about it. Also, anytime a bidet comes up in conversation, I always say something like, hey, remember that time in Crocodile Dundee when there was a bidet? Yeah. And to this day, I still have never seen one in real life. For washing your backside, right? Another imprint that was left on me was, um, Linda Kozlowski. You know, I, I didn't mean, um... You're tall, senor me. She may or may not be partially responsible for my attraction to blondes as a teenager. Let's move on though to what is hands down the best and probably most famous scene. And your wallet. Nick, give him your wallet. What for? He's got a knife. <laughs> That's not a knife. That's a knife. Seriously, one of the best movie quotes of all time. I could go on and on about what I love about Crocodile Dundee, which would be better for a podcast format, and I'm only talking about the first one. I still have yet to revisit part two, and admittedly, I still haven't seen part three. Don't judge me though, I'm afraid it's gonna taint my love for the series. I love you. I love you. But if you haven't seen the movie yet, please go see it and tell me what you think. There's a variety of content that should be sure to please all types of people. And if you still aren't convinced, I mean, look at the movie posters, especially part two. It's so epic. And it's unfortunate that Paul Hogan's acting career never quite took off because besides this franchise, his main works were starring in Almost an Angel, Lightning Jack, and Flipper with Elijah Wood, which were all critical failures. And dang, 11% for part two? That's just criminal. I'm not saying I want a remake, but I would love to see more future films taking place in the outback. There aren't enough of them, because you know, crocodiles, kangaroos, and the bush and stuff. And speaking of kangaroos, the scene where Mick hides behind the dead carcass of one and appears as if it's shooting a shotgun was one of the most traumatic childhood experiences. Look at that thing, it's terrifying. Thanks again for watching my first retrospective and rewatch. If you also grew up with Crocodile Dundee, I would love to hear your memories as well. And please subscribe if you haven't already. I would truly appreciate you helping me grow my channel.